Hello, my name is John Spangler. Welcome to my YouTube channel. As always, I explain the title. Uh, I titled this channel Underground. Uh, I'll get more into video about the reason why I titled it. Uh, this is the Rapture Info page, where I give off the information about many raptures in the scriptures to give understanding, uh, to take away some of the confusion we have and why, uh, uh, you know, people argue about whether there's a pre-tribulation rapture, a mid-tribulation rapture, or a post-tribulation rapture. It's all the above, people. The, the next one to take place is the pre-tribulation rapture. Then there'll be a mid-tribulation rapture. Those are only the two witnesses. They'll be at the Temple Mount. And then at the year end of the uh, seven-year tribulation, there'll be two more raptures. One will be the martyred saints, and the other will be everybody all from one location to another on earth for Armageddon for judgment. And I believe this is the reason why there's so much problems in, in people is they look for men for answers instead of being in the Word of God. And the Word of God shows many biblical raptures. Now, to give the understanding of this, yes, rapture is an English word. As a matter of fact, I'll make a video uh, probably tomorrow about uh, so many people keep telling me rapture is a made-up word. It is not. It has meaning to it. It means uh, a state of or experience of being carried away or transported. Uh, translated. Or, I'm sorry, transported. Now we're taking one location to another. Uh, we get the English word for the from the Latin word "rapturo" or or from the original old Greek word of "harpazo," which went referred to as snatching away, carried up. Now the New Testament was written in Old Cone Greek, and the Old Testament is written in Hebrew with a couple phrases in Aramaic. To understand the Bible, I always tell people we cannot look at it with the Western mindset. You have to have better understanding. You look at the Middle Eastern culture, and to be honest, you're not going to totally understand the Bible ever unless you're born again Christian. That's who it's for. The scriptures, we have enough scriptures to get us to come to know God and to be born again. But once we're born again, then things will be revealed to us. Until then, they are not. It's for the believer, not the unbeliever. It's to make the unbeliever a believer and then to educate the believer, if, if that's how you want to put it. Now, how we know uh, where hypotza would be in the New Testament uh, by phrases like uh, caught up, falling away, departure, uh, carried up, received up, uh, different phrases like that, taken up, are many kinds of phrases that, that we have understanding uh, where, where we would have uh, used the English word rapture. Now, I did a video a long time ago time ago about where I found eight biblical raptures and I always give a shout out to Mr. Man because he reminded me about Paul and John then later I thought about Isaiah everybody says that's a, uh, a vision but that was a rapture and I'll explain that in a minute and then recently I was back in my studies and into the book of Ezekiel and so I saw we're in Ezekiel where he was taken from one place to another on earth so that's another rapture so there's 13 biblical raptures according to the scriptures. That's why I'm up till now. Also, uh, Paul refers to someone he knew 14 years ago, whether in the spirit or out in the body or the spirit or out, he didn't know, and he describes a rapture for that person. Who that person is, I don't know. I don't count that in the list. So actually, there may be 14 biblical raptures, but I do not know who that person is. Now, what I've found in, so far is in Genesis chapter 5, verse 21 through 20, uh, 21 through 24, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5, it talks about uh, he walked with God and was therefore uh, taken up. In Genesis, in Hebrews, it says he was translated up four times. Elijah, 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 11, talks about him being taken up in a whirlwind, chariot of fire. Now, Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 through 8, does not have a phrase. So how do you know that's a rapture and not a vision? Because he's in front of God. Because it talks about how he was doomed, as it says in the, in the Hebrew, where uh, he was going to, he was in the presence of God. He knew he was going to die. He was a man of unclean lips, from a, a people of unclean lips. So the seraphim, seraphim went over and, and it took a tong, flew over and took a tong, and uh, what the tong, I mean, it, it took a coal of fire of the altar, and placed it on his lips to purge his sins, and said, Thy sins are purged. So he went in front of God for his instruction, and came down for his commission, or his, what he had to do. So that's how we know Isaiah was a rapture. I know a lot of people say it was just a vision he had. 
then they wouldn't have needed to uh, uh, go, you know, be cleansed. His sins be cleansed in front of God. Now, Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 13, 12 through 15 talks about took me up in the spirit. But he's talking about being from one location to another on earth. So this is the first time we hear of someone being uh, transported from one place to another. There's, there's more places like that, but uh, that's the first one. Now I get into the one that gives me grief about everybody and, and a lot of attacks, and that's Jesus Christ. Uh, they talk about Jesus' ascension, but they don't see him being raptured. Well, he ascended first. That's John chapter 20, verse 17. Jesus said unto her, he was talking to Mary Magdalene. That's why I have in that picture back there. I always talk about referred to Mary as a picture of Mary Magdalene. I put anointing Jesus' feet. My son got me that years ago, and that's my favorite picture. It says, Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren, and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father, and your Father, and to my God, and your God. He had to ascend up to put his blood sacrifice on the ark. Later we see the ark in Revelation chapter 11, but don't say ark of the covenant. It says ark of testimony. Why? His blood has been placed on him. That is his testimony. Now this is where I upset a lot of people. Uh, you know, you call out wolves in sheep's clothing. People don't seem to have problems coming to say things about me. But uh, Ron Wyatt had a ministry for many years. He's mis misled many people and various things. I'm big into biblical, biblical archaeology review and different things in archaeology overseas. I love it. I, I uh, you know, I, I, I've been in the Middle East and uh, in the military and uh uh, I've seen a lot of things, but uh, uh, Ron Wyatt claimed that Jesus Christ died on the cross, which we believe, of course, I start this always wrong, but what I'm saying is the blood from the cross went down uh, at his feet, went down into through the cracks of Calvary onto where the Ark of Covenant was hid underneath Calvary. Ron Wyatt found it. God led him to it. He dug there many years, found it, and but the angel said, don't bring it out at the time. Now, how we know that it's not true, because as I say, Jesus Christ's blood didn't have nothing to do with the earthly ark. The earthly ark, it had to do with the heavenly ark, because he was that perfect covenant. The eighth covenant, the last covenant, there were seven before before him. His was perfect. He was that perfect sacrifice for us. So his blood had to go up to heaven. Nothing here to do with the earth. And that's how you know someone's not being true for or not. I don't care how sincere they seem or anything. A lot of people argue because they say, well, on his deathbed. He talked about the ark. Well, that he had found it. I don't believe it. Uh, I always tell people, there's many people who claim they killed JFK on their deathbed. They all didn't, you know, they all were liars or at least all but one. Uh, so, Ron Wyatt, just because someone lies and says something on their deathbed, that means nothing. We are not to be led by the by men. We are not to be led by emotions. We are to be led by the Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Very few people are. Very few people are born again, and that's the issue. And I'll explain that more in this video today. Now, Jesus Christ came back down, all right? He was in, dead in the earth. He already raptured once because he came out, out, you know, came back alive. That was a rapture. And then he went up to heaven, came back down, visited for 40 days, was witnessed by over 500 people, had doubting Thomas touch the scars on his body, and then later he's raptured up. And how we know that's Acts 1, Acts chapter 1, verse 9, talks about him being separated from his uh, disciples as he's given instruction, and he's taken up. Luke chapter 24, verse 51, talks about giving instructions. He's, he's separated, and he's carried up. Mark chapter 16, verse 9, talks about how he's separated and received up. Uh, Alice Childers put one out just the other day. I was looking at Luke 9, 51, where it talks about he was looking on uh, Jerusalem, where later he will be received up. Now it's taken up at that point. And the one I get the most grief, Revelation 12, 5, where it talks about him being caught up. Now, yes, and and of course, Patch is out there playing with this toy. You can tell he's got a toy mouse. He's very vocal with it, my cat. He runs up down the hallway with it. He probably hears my voice in here, so he wants to bring it to my feet. He does that a lot. When I, my Bible study today, four times he brought the mouse to my feet, three or four times. Um so uh, this is where, yes, I, I, I recognize the Revelation 12 sign is, is a pre-tribulation pre rapture sign. I agree. But where it says in the one part, uh, 
it, it's not about pre-tribulation rapture. I disagree with everybody on that. And that's just how I see it. It says in, tribulation, in Revelation 12, 5, And she brought forth the man-child who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron, and her child was cut up to God, unto God and to his throne. Uh, we all recognize she being Israel, bringing forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron. That represents Jesus Christ, because that's the voice talks about how he's going to rule the nations with the rod of iron. And then it says, And her child was caught up, or potzled up, unto God and to his throne. And so when you first look at that, that's a harpazo phrase. And it says to his throne is singular. But people want to say that's about the pre-tribulation rapture. Jesus Christ represents the body, you know, and the Christ. And it's a pre-tribulation rapture because it talks about uh, it's used as a harpazo phrase because they don't look at Jesus being raptured. And yes, he was. He's the first fruits. He's first of everything. So he was raptured. He ascended on his own, came back down, and he was raptured. He don't, you don't, you know, he didn't ascend the second time because he's in the process of doing something. He's talking to the disciples, giving instructions, and all of a sudden he's separate. It says he's separated, and he's either carried up, taken up, received up, or caught up. So it's an action, but uh, people don't see that, and that is uh, just where we disagree. Now the witnesses to Christ. That's Matthew chapter 27, verse 51 through 54 is very interesting. Right after Christ died on the cross, it says, And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. And graves were opened, and many bodies of saints which slept arose. And came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. Now when the centurion and they that were with him, watching Jesus, saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. So they understood at that moment that uh, they did had uh, uh, killed the Son of God here on earth. It's his human form, so to speak. And that's the only place I could find in scriptures about that. That's very interesting. We don't know how long they lived till they obviously died. They died again. Uh, so was it everybody was that was raised up, or was just a certain amount? We don't know. Philip chapter, um, Philip, Acts 8, chapter, if I could speak, I get tongue-tied sometimes. Philip, Acts chapter 8, verse 26 through 40, talks about how Philip, as soon as he baptized the Ethiopian official, was taken from one location to earth on another. Paul, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12, says a doorway was opened to him in heaven. No, it doesn't give a rapture uh, saying he was caught up or received up or anything. But it's understanding a doorway, if you look in the Greek, means going through or henceforth go through, if you go back in the old Greek, researching on that. Now, John, Revelation chapter 4, 1 through 2, talks about a doorway open to heaven, but he also hears the word of sound of a trumpet saying, come up hither. So there's a rapture phrase there. Now we get into pre-tribulation rapture body of Christ, that the video is going to be about a day, and I'm going to have a lot of people attack me. That's fine. I expect it. Uh, Paul's doctrine was all about pre-tribulation rapture. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 through 58. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1 through 11. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1 through 17. All talks about a pre-tribulation rapture. Jesus Christ, Matthew chapter 24, verse 36 through 51, is about pre-tribulation rapture. The first part of Matthew chapter 24, 1 through 35, talks about the seven year tribulation his second coming in great detail, then talks about the fig tree generation, and then gets into pre-tribulation rapture. And I'm about to get into that in the very very detailed verse by verse breakdown of the show. That's Jesus Christ talking about pre-tribulation rapture, people. Uh, Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 13, talks about uh, the ten virgins. It gives warning that you're going to go to, uh, you know, five were wise and five were foolish. And I'm going to talk about that in great detail in the video of how it explains it's about pre-tribulation rapture, and five will not go up. They don't get a second chance once that when the others go up, and I'll explain more of that in the video. Now, Revelation chapter 19, verses 7 through 16, shows us in heaven the wedding feast of Christ. It describes what we are wearing in great detail and what it represents, then talks about Jesus Christ wearing many crowns, meaning that we've already had the beam of seat judgment. He, we laid the crowns at his feet, so he's got all the crowns we gave him. And then he comes to earth as the second coming, surrounded by us, because it says surrounded by his army, and it gives in great detail what they're wearing, why it shows that we're wearing the same thing, it's us. 
Second Jude, um, I'm sorry, his second coming on Jude 14 and 15 talks about Jesus Christ coming down surrounded by 10,000 of his saints uh, to pass judgment at the end of the seven year tribulation. That's pre tribulation raptured saints. That's what it represents. Uh, it's not a very big number. Not very many people are born again today. Very few. And I'll explain that in the video I'm getting into uh, how many. And so uh, it's a small number. And a lot of people give me grief about it. I explain in great detail in a past video uh, how I get that number and everything, what it's all about. Um, one thing I just quick say is there's billions of people on the face of the earth. They say like 8 billion. And there's thousands going up. And the first time there was billions of people on the face of the earth and only eight got on the ark. So uh, second time around, we're doing better, but not much better, but we're doing better. Dead Sea Scrolls, uh, 200 AD, the Essenes talked about documentation shows pre-tribulation rapture taught to early church. I put that in there because everybody keeps talking about the Darby theory, 1800s, that, uh, which I'm going to get in the video. They talk about pre-tribulation rapture is new teaching. It is not. It was taught from the beginning of the church. Uh, Mid-tribulation, uh, there'll be, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I skipped uh, Amos chapter 8, verse 11 through 12, where it talks about in a future day, it's not happened yet, God's going to send a famine on the earth, it's going to be uh, uh, a thirst of, uh, not of uh, water or food, but a thirst of the scripture, no word of God will be found. And the reason for that is the church is gone, the pre-tribulation rapture, there's a gap of time before the seven-year tribulation starts. A lot of people want to put one leads into another. No, there's a gap of time. That's during the Bema Seat judgment by Jesus Christ when we're up in heaven being judged and you get your rewards or don't get your rewards. Uh, how I know that is because during the seven-year tribulation, there's going to be 144,000 Jewish men going around spiritually uh, gifted. They're spreading the gospel. You're going to have the two witnesses I'm about to talk to mid-tribulation that are going, the first three and a half years are going to be you know, talking about God. And then you will have an angel, the whole seven years, flying around spreading the gospel. So uh, how is it this is a future time where no one can find the scriptures? Because we're going to go up. As soon as we go up, it's going to be bad on this earth. It's going to get dark. Like I always say, things on YouTube, things like that will disappear. Everything about Christianity is going to disappear. There's going to be nuclear war. That's where you get Isaiah 17 and everything else, destruction. And destruction of the United States of America. So for some reason, people think we're, we're a godly nation. We, we've never been a godly nation. Uh, you've just been lied and deceived too. Now, mid-tribulation, Revelation chapter 11, verses 3 through 12, will be the two witnesses lie dead in the street, three and a half days, brought back to life, and God himself will say, come up hither. At the end of the seven-year tribulation, you're going to have the martyred saints that are going to come up as, as we go down with Jesus Christ. He comes down surrounded by us. The souls will come out of the altar in heaven. As we come down, the martyrs, the bodies will come up and they'll get the glorified bodies. That's Revelation chapter 14, 14 through 16, where it talks about symbolic. No, it doesn't say they're raptured up, but it says how Jesus will bring a sickle and bring them in. That's talking about the martyred saints. And then later, Revelation chapter 14, verses 17 through 20, it talks about how the angels are go out and brought with the sickle and bring back in. And that's all to Armageddon. Just like Philip, who was taken from one location to another, and Ezekiel from a lo location to another on earth, they were raptured from one spot to another. Same here. People, There's people in remote areas on this earth that, that it's not heard the gospel will during the seven-year tribulation, but they won't be at Armageddon. They have to be brought there for judgment. That's Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 through 30, the wheats and tares. So that, that is going to take place at a future time. So right now I'm going to break down my, my time real quick. And so we get started on this video. Uh, 19. Welcome, my name is John Spangle. This is my YouTube channel uh, titled Underground. I just finished the introductory part to the video, giving explaining how uh, to give understanding that there are, uh, I'm up to 13 now. Uh, I found, I was researching more and realized I missed another one. I apologize. I have cognitive memory problems due to my PTSD. And I do have problems with my speech sometimes because of it. So sometimes I have to slow down on when I'm, when I'm speaking and I act very tired. It's because I'm sick all the time. Today's been a real bad day. But I have this intro that I get about every time and it, and I talk about to, to give understanding. And that's where a lot of confusion is. No one's being shown or taught that there's many raptures in the Word of God. You know, they, they think rapture or thinking of one. Is it a pre-trib or mid-trib or post-trib? 
people according to the word, and I show you there is pre-tribulation rapture. I show many scriptures to that. I show where there's a mid-tribulation rapture. That's the two witnesses. And I show at the end of the seven-year tribulation, there's going to be two more raptures. The martyred saints will be raptured and all to Armageddon. And I show that all through scripture. And a lot of people say, you know, there's no scripture on that stuff, which I'm about to explain. They're just not in the word of God. I mean, not correctly. Uh, it's man's teachings, not God's teachings. So let me get in this real quick where I got started. I titled this, uh, oh, by the way, I go, I go by the title, uh, Underground. I was thinking about the, the modern day church in China and Iran. And there are places where the uh, Christian church is being persecuted as we're still working for God's kingdom. Uh, the church has always been under uh, persecution and tribulation from the beginning. We've never not been in a persecution and tribulation. But we're not here for the seven-year tribulation. And I'll explain that later in this video. And I'll well, show you scripture to show that. I use scripture on everything I do. I back everything up to scripture. I don't go with feelings. And I don't go with the crowd because I get a lot of, as you say, hate mail all the time. And that's fine because they'll have to answer to God, not me. I'm not trying to make friends here. I'm trying to be obedient to God and, and I'm trying to get people saved. That's what I'm trying to do. And this is what this is all about, to show you different uh, areas of uh, things to be taught. So uh, I went online and found, I think, 55 people all named. These 55 channels or people are all against a pre-tribulation rapture. And what I did was I only took the first 25 and I looked, seeing how many, because they had a, so few, had a few thousand, you know, here and a few thousand there. You know, I actually went through here. Well, it was a little bit more, about 28 of them or 29 of them, and found that they had over a 1,000 subs. I mean, not thousands. I apologize, over a million. Out of about 28 channels, I found a million subscribers. Wait, not many? Yeah, because some had three, 400,000 here and there, and I didn't count the little, uh, you know, the ones that had little amount. I count the ones that had a big amount. And it's about half of this list of 55 people. That's over a million people that if they don't come to the correct teaching, they're lost. And I'll show you that in the scripture. Uh, I'll start out with these to just show uh, uh, who they are. Uh, Truth and Edited, Born Again Barbarian, Seven Trumpets Prepper, script, Scripture Through Ancient's Eyes, Joel Richardson, Bible Flock Box, Vlad Sachek, Jerry Lee Colbert, New Life Baptist Church, Joel Schimmel, The Bible Says, Good Night Ministries, Service Christi, I Learned the Lies, Tomorrow's World, Bible Answer Man, FAI Studios, Christ is Enough Ministries, Rescuing the Church, Michael Seamer, Juniper, Juniper Tree and Beyond, Theology Project, Trish Hepzibah, God, Family, and Guns, Michael Merritt, Pastor Murray's Shepherd's Chapel. I've known him for a long time. Warning the People, Revelation 12, 11. Bombay Fellowship, Son of Adam, Christian Living, Christian Living The Remnant Radio, Peter Allen, A Rude Awakening, Watchers of Truth, The English Fundamentalist, Truth is Calling, Gatekeeper's Box, Edward Awanak, Robert Morris, Seven Pre-Trib Problems, Brian O'Connell, Brian O'Connell, Dr. Michael Brown, Isaiah Saldivar, The Lord's Way Ministry, Wick Winter Ministry, The Line of Fire, A Gathering 144, Kelly Z. Wolf, Tools for Jesus, Path to Prophecy, Truth Over Tradition, Bina Torah, Corals Van Life Ended, The Master's Voice Prophecy Blog. You go to these channels and you follow this pre-tribulation doctrine is not true. And you stay there, you will go to hell. And I will show you in the scriptures. Is that a very, very mean statement? Yes, it is. I dare show someone how they're going to go with doctrine and go to hell. Now, these people are saying the opposite. They're saying that that uh, if you believe in the pre-tribulation rapture, you're going to hell. And I'm about to show you that. Um, the title of this is Pre-Tribulation Rapture Deception or Truth. I put this out there. I was doing some other things today, which I'm going to do tomorrow. Is uh, uh, I don't have it written down. Something about the, the word rapture. 
being a made up word or something like that's what's going to be titled. Uh, because so many people, I, I get so much about the rapture. I have one gentleman that went 14 times, different videos, 14 of my videos, and put comments. And uh, it was about, <laughs> finally I said, I tried to explain to him that rapture is an English word. The, the Old Testament was written in Greek. I mean, the New Testament is written in Greek. And then he was putting out there that uh, I don't care about Greek. Well, then you know what? Forget it. I took all of his comments out. <laughs> There's no reason for it. And, you know. Uh, the old, the New Testament. I apologize. I keep saying Old Testament. The New Testament was written in Cone Greek. So rapture is an English word we get for the Latin word rapario or turo, which is for the original Greek word harpazo, which would have been the original word. We get it by phrases: caught up, a falling away, uh, taken up, carried up, received up, um, different forms of words like that in English, which would be uh, harpazo which means snatched away or, or taken, translated. Uh, the original uh, definition of rapture, I'm looking over at my notes over here, um, is a state of or experience of being carried away or transported from one location to another. And that's what it's all about. And we use that English word for that. The concept's there. And then people want to argue because you know what? They're ungodly people. All right, let's just get out there. These people here use the scriptures and mislead people from God. And that's what this is all about. Uh, they, they maybe grew up in church or whatever. Instead of stepping away and reading the scriptures, they read what they taught. And uh, it's, these were in those last days. This is very important. It's the whole purpose for this channel is to give instruction that right now, so if I look, there's 13 raptures in scriptures. All right. Uh, actually, there's 14, but I don't know who the fourth thing is because... Uh, Paul talks about someone, it says he knew someone 14 years ago that in the body or out of the body he didn't understand and explains it's a rapture thing. So we don't, I don't know who he's talking about. So I don't include that one. But there's 13 rap, uh, raptures in the Bible. Now to give an example real quick, Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 through 8. A lot of ministers I've talked to said that's just a, a vision of Isaiah. But when you get into the, the, the eight verses there and you talk about the, I'll just summarize it for you. I wouldn't go do that, but I'm going to do it now before I get into this. Isaiah, uh, it's not a vision. And how you know that? Because he's up in front of uh, God. He's up in heaven. He sees him on the throne. And he's about to go in front of him for instructions. And he talks about he, he's afraid. He, he says, I'm doomed. In the, in, actually, in the Hebrew, I was reading it. It says, I'm doomed. I forget what it says in the English Bible. Uh Meaning that he was he was a man of unclean lips from a people of unclean lips. He was sinful and he couldn't go in front of God. He was going to die. So one of the seraphim uh, took tongs, flew over to the altar, took a live coal and put it on his lips and purged his sins and says, "There, your sins are purged." So why is his sins got to be purged if it's just a vision? So actually, he was in the presence of God, went to God, got instruction, came and did, came to earth, did his commission, did what God told him to do. And so uh, you have to have discernment and understanding. That's how we're supposed to read the word. So the statements against pre-tribulation rapture. I'm going against. I'm going to talk about five people here. I talked about truth unedited. Uh, they put out, you believe in pre-tribulation rapture, you're going to hell. That's The channel just states that. You are biblically separating uh, church from Israel and from each other, you know, between the church and Israel, and that's not true. Well, I'll say it many times. The, the seven year tribulation is Daniel chapter 9, verse 1 through 27. It's about, it's for the Jewish people. And so we're, we're saved Gentiles. We're not, so it's not about us. The whole purpose of the seven year tribulation is that. But I'll explain more in the scriptures. Now, Vilat Suchek, I've looked at a lot of his stuff. He calls us Western people snowflakes all the time. Uh, because we believe in those that believe in pre-tribulation rapture. I should I should say that that it, it says you're snowflakes, you're weak, you know. So you're starting out with name calling, kind of childlike, which is ridiculous. We're supposed to be men of God. Talks about how we're escapism, and he loves to say that there's no two second comings. Why well, I'm not saying there's no two, no two second comings. There's only one second coming. That's when Christ comes down, surrounded by us. Comes down to earth. That's Jude, Jude 14, surrounded by 10,000 of his saints. That's us. We're those pre tribulation rapture saints. That, that's all about us, people. And he comes down surrounded by us. Uh, this man needs to read the word more. 
Now, Pastor Murray at Shepherd's Chapel I didn't put a lot out there because he's made so many videos against pre-tribulation rapture. He made a series of videos, and then he calls it the pre-trib rapture heresy. And so it's a lot. I'm, I've known people from his church. I'm actually, I had some people uh, on my videos. I, I took took what they said off and stopped them from going to the channel because I knew them personally, and they were just attacking me because they know I believe in pre-tribulation rapture. Now, God, family, and guns. No scripture to back up their lies. They just believe. At the last trumpet, later he had a video titled, Teaching Pre-Tribulation Rapture is Satanic. So I'm going to go against this, this man here. I mean, uh, I, I got many scriptures. I got uh, Pre-Tribulation Rapture. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, what Jesus Christ says in Matthew chapter 24, 4, verses 36 and 51, and Matthew chapter 25, uh, verse 1 through 15, the parable of ten virgins. And then later I'm going to talk about Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 51 through 58, because I'm going to explain about the last trumpet, since I seem to like to talk about that. But Paul also talks about 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18, 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 through 11, 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 17, all pre-tribulation rapture doctrine. And let me state up here at the beginning, Revelation chapter 19, verses 7 through 16, talks about the wedding feast in heaven. It, to be, it describes what we're wearing. That's very important because it, it expand, explains what it's about, the white, clean linen. Then it talks about Jesus Christ getting ready to come down for a second coming, wearing many crowns. Why? Because at the beam of judgment, we lay our crowns at Jesus' feet. Remember, you got 24 elders uh, talked about in Revelation. Who's the 24 elders? That's after the pre-tribulation rapture. I give a video about that. 24 elders are picked out of that group. And so... Uh, there's a lot there. People just got to study God's word. And uh, so it talks about how you know, Jesus Christ comes down, surrounded by his army, gives them great de detail what they're wearing. What are they wearing? What we are wearing. We are his army. And then he comes down. We follow him down for judgment at the end, end of the seven-year tribulation. Uh, there's many things there. And the only reason, uh, like I said, I, I went through these, these subs, subscribers. There's over a million. That's not in the whole list here. I just read you. Over a million people are against a pre-tribulation rapture. It's just unbelievable. But those, I put it this way, they're not born again. And that's a bold statement. I just had someone attack me today on the channel. Uh, on one of the videos, because I talked about the talents. How, uh, you know, one person uh, talks about the master giving the servants talents, one five, one two, and one one to their own abilities. He went on a long trip. He came back. The one with five came back and had five more. He was blessed. The one with two talents came back and had two more. He was blessed. And the one that had one buried it and did nothing. He was chastised, condemned to hell because he says he was going where there's, well, I don't say weeping and welling. See, well, it's either weeping or welling and then gnashing of teeth, which represents heaven, I mean, hell. And so I said that that, that person went to hell. Why? Because he was called a slothful servant. He wasn't working for the kingdom. So this person was looking at my video, said a couple comments, really good. And when he got to that part, he uh, what did he, he put a comment? He said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus because you're saying a born again brother went to hell. I'm not saying that at all. I'm reading exactly what Jesus Christ said in the parable. And I'm talking about how the slothful servant, and it says, Christ says he's sending them to hell. Took away from what he had, gave it to the man of the five talents. Which, well, it says 10 because remember he had five and he made him 10. And then he sent him to gnashing and welling of teeth, which represents hell. That's what Jesus Christ said. That's not John Spango. So what I'm saying is one servant was born again. The first servant and second servant was born again. The other, the other servant wasn't. Because if he was born again, he would have been working for the kingdom. There's many people that go to church, active in church, that aren't born again. That's the problem. Because they could be deceived. Their heart and their mind together were not right with God when they went up to do you know, when they went to get baptized, I mean, baptism doesn't save you. It's belief in Jesus Christ. Let's go on to ABCs. Admit you're a sinner. That's Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Believe Jesus Christ died and rose again to pay for your sins. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. Confess Jesus is Lord of your life, putting your total trust in Jesus as your only hope of salvation. Romans chapter 10, verse 9. There's many people that don't do the confess part, you know, they, where they don't put the total trust because they're still involved in the world. Worldly Christians aren't born again. Lukewarm church, they're not born again. Uh, that's that's where you got to get discernment, discernment and understanding. 
A lot of these people listen to men. Yes, I say things here, but I don't want you to take what I say here. I want to show you in the scripture, show you where I'm looking at things, and then on your own, study. That's what this is all about. So let's get in here. Joe Richardson. I talk to him a lot because he's so much against pre-tribulation rapture. Now, a single verse teaches a pre-tribulation and rapture. Amazing. I'm about to talk to you about Matthew 24, 36 through 51. And the reason why is because he butchers this up and says it's not a pre-tribulation rapture. Uh, teaching by Jesus Christ. Many will fall away from the faith. He talks about Matthew chapter 24, the uh, first part of it, love grows cold. Disagrees with free tribulation rapture being absolute. It, it's not, it don't matter. And comparing it to Mormons and Jehovah Witnesses and the statement he made that uh, those that do that sound doctrine is saying the same mentality of a Mormon and a Jehovah Witness. Modern doctrine, no, there's no modern doctrine support all at all and not even been around historically. Man, this this guy's going to get blown out of the water. I mean, come on. They're so easily to, to show this. And like I said, doesn't matter in doctrine disagreement. It matters. It matters for your salvation. Don't you understand when you, you're saying that there's no pre-tribulation rapture? I'll stand up to say this a thousand times. I've said it many times before. And people give me grief. I don't care. It's the word of God. If you deny Jesus Christ, he will deny you. You're denying Jesus Christ coming for the bride. You understand? You're saying Jesus Christ isn't going to come for his bride. Oh, no, we're at the end of the seven-year trip. No, it matters, people. It matters. Getting God's word, it matters. If you're confused, that's because you're listening to people. Get in the word and, and go to God in prayer and, and get that way. Because this is crunch time. This is it. We are in that moment. Psalm 83 war. A lot of people would argue it's not. We're not in the Psalm 83 war. I don't even want to go there. I did a video about it just the other day. We're in the Psalm 83 war. We're the tip of the iceberg. This escalates. And before this gets real bad, we go up. Any moment we're going to go up. This is why I do these videos. This is why it's so important. You're about to go up. So I always give my, my information page. And be introductory. I talk about raptures to show that there's many. All right. I'm still learning, still finding more. That's fine, but it's enough proof there to show you that there's many raptures. There's going to be a pre-tribulation rapture. Mid-tribulation rapture is Revelation chapter 11, verse 3 through 12. That talks about the two witnesses. Lie down in the street three and a half day are, are raised up, I mean, brought back to life, and then God himself says, come up hither. Now, there's no rapture meaning, but the symbolic is there for the two raptures at the end of the seven-year tribulation. Revelation chapter 14, verses 14 through 16, when it talks about Jesus Christ taking the sickle, sickle and bringing in the harvest, that's the martyred saints. The souls in, in the altar in heaven will, will fall down with us, and the bodies will come out of the graves, and they'll be changed. And then as we touch down to Mount Olives, it'll be uh, Revelation chapter 14, verses 17 through 20. It talks about Christ sending out his angels to bring in what? The harvest. What's the harvest? It's the graph, the uh, wrath of uh, the grape har the great grape harvest of wrath. That's the judgment. That's bringing everybody to Armageddon. Has there been a rapture where someone's been one location to earth to another? Absolutely, twice. Ezekiel chapter thirteen verses twelve through fifteen talks about how he took me up in spirit from one location to another. Uh, the other one is Philip Acts chapter eight verses twenty six through forty he talks about as soon as he baptized the Ethiopian official. Caught up in the spirit from one location to another on earth. God does things before to show us things that are later. So everybody at the end, the last rapture, that's Revelation chapter 14, verses 17 through 20, symbolic. And when it talks about it, it's bringing in the harvest, meaning that everybody's going to be brought. Not everybody's going to be fighting in Armageddon. Earth's a big place, people. So everybody's going to be brought to Armageddon. The statement on this channel I've been putting out a lot is the church is not purified by enduring the seven-year tribulation. The Jewish people are. That's Daniel chapter 9, verse 1 through 27. The whole reason for the seven-year tribulation is Daniel chapter 9, period. The church is purified solely by the complete work of Jesus Christ on the cross. John chapter 17, verse 1 through 26. Denying the pre-tribulation rapture is denying Christ for coming for his bride, and it's also denying that he completed he made the Eighth Covenant. That changed everything, people. There were seven covenants before him. His covenant, his blood covenant, was the perfect covenant. The church being under the gift of grace only 
and not the Jewish people who face being martyred and to be with God unless they endure to the end of the seven-year tribulation. Now, will there be Gentiles saved during the seven-year tribulation? Absolutely. There's many Gentiles that have not heard the gospel yet. They will be saved. But before the pre-tribulation rapture, better get born again because those that have heard the gospel and don't accept it or worldly Christians where they won't let go of the world, they're damned. How can you say such a thing? Look at Lot's wife. Lot was told to go talk to his sons-in-laws. Plural, there was more than one. So when they left, they took the two daughters that weren't married because they were living with them. There was at least two son-in-laws and two daughters because there was plural sons-in-laws. They mocked him when Lot tried to say, come with me. They mocked him. So the next morning they left without him. Lot's wife turned around. She was told not to look back. She was yearning for her family. That will send you to hell. Well, that's harsh. Well, she turned into a pillar of salt. Jesus Christ's own words. I, I, I talked yesterday in the video. I quoted what Jesus Christ said. That he comes to uh, separate father from son, son from father, mother from daughter, daughter from mother, and mother-in-law from daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law from mother-in-law. He comes to separate families. He doesn't come to bring them together on spiritual matters. That's why I showed in the last video on spiritual matters. He doesn't. It's all about him. It's all for him. That's on the way up. You've got to let go of this world. That means let go of relationships if you need to, or let go of many things. You've got to be able to let go. If not, guess what? That's the reason why the road to hell is wide and easy. And the road to heaven is narrow and easy. But people seem it's hard because they can't let go of this flesh. And I'll get a lot of grief from people for saying that. That's fine. Let them grieve. Jesus taught a pre-tribulation rapture. Now I'm going to break down Matthew chapter 24, 36 through 51. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Jesus starts with the warning. Also, Daniel chapter 9, verse 24 through 7, tells us the exact day of Jesus' second coming. So Jesus is about to describe a separate event. We know exactly when Jesus comes. Uh, three and a half days after uh, uh, the two witnesses, that same day that they go up, the Antichrist goes into the temple. Seven years, that's Daniel 9, uh, tw verse 27 uh, seven years after the covenant is confirmed, Jesus Christ will come. We know. Matthew chapter 24, verses 1 through 20, uh, 35, explains the seven-year tribulation, explains in great detail Jesus' second coming. All right? Then talks about the fig tree parable, the, the last generation. Now we're about to be described something totally different because he's already told you about the second coming and now he's going to tell you about something. Listen to these words. Listen to the words of Jesus Christ himself. But as the days of Noah, no, as in Greek is Noah and no in the Old Testament. No, where so shall also the coming of Sam be, son of man be. For as in, in verse 38, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying, giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. Also in verse 39, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so also the coming of the son of man be. So by verse 37 through 39, we are described, a, 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 if I can speak, we are described a period in time where everyone is enjoying life before an event. Unlike Matthew chapter 24, 29 through 31, which describes a different world at Jesus' second coming, as men living in fear while the heavens themselves shake greatly. As in the time of Noah, they're partying, having a good time, living large. So verse 40 and verse 41. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Verse 40 and 41 use the harpazo phrases, be taken, meaning from one location to another. Then we have verse 42, watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. We're given a warning. Verse 43 and 44 but know this, that if the good men of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. So another warning by Jesus Christ, to be vigilant, ever waiting, watching. Verse 45 talks about, Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? 
uh, I put in here referring to teaching sound doctrine at a specific time. Uh, meat's always referred to sound doctrine, as Paul uses a lot. He talks about meat to early Christians. I'm, I'm sorry, milk to early Christians and meat to mature Christians. And it says meat in due season. What season are we in? We're in the pre-tribulation rapture season. This is talking about now. Why do you know that? Because I know that by what's going on with Israel. And Israel's the key. And uh, But it, it's what about meat in due season? It's referring to teaching a sound doctrine at a specific time. And I believe that it's a pre-tribulation -tri -tri rapture doctrine. Verse 46 and 47. Blessed is that servant whose Lord, when he cometh, shall find him so doing. Verily I said to you, that he shall make him ruler of all his goods. So he is rewarded for giving the sound doctrine teaching at a specific time. And as I said, I, I, that's where I look at, I see that being referred to. People will argue, they will argue. Verse 48. But and if the evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord, the delay is coming. N notice he's not being vigilant. And he's considered evil. Verse 49, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunken. That smite in the uh, uh, Greek refers to like beat or fight. In other words, they're fighting against a doctrine teaching and living or compromising to worldly living. In other words, uh, he's arguing with his fellow servants about something, total argument, and he's living uh, worldly. Verse 50, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him and in an hour that he is not aware of. So he's not looking or waiting for what? The pre-tribulation rapture. He's definitely not doing that. Verse 51. And shall cut him asunder and point him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And I put in here a note. Weeping and gnashing of teeth in scripture means in hell. Jesus warns that those living for this world, not coming, not caring for this world, uh, will miss out on the pre-tribulation rapture and go to hell for eternity. And that's the way I see it. Why? Because they're not, they're not, uh, uh, they're living for the world. They're being as in days of Noah. They're enjoying themselves. Obviously, this coming of Jesus Christ is at a different time than his second coming. Well, the only other time he's coming is in the clouds. He's not coming to earth. He's coming in clouds calling us up. This is all about pre-tribulation rapture, people. Many people don't see that. And God reveals things to us. And I believe the truly born again see it. Those that are not born again will not. Now, Jesus Christ also gives us uh, something about pre-tribulation rapture, and that's the parable of the ten virgins. Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 through 13. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet their bridegroom. Five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so. Let it there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with them to the marriage, and doors shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Then he ends with the warning. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man cometh. So I want to, uh, before I, I got one more thing to talk about quickly after this and I'm done. But let me get into this real quick here for many reasons. I believe the anointing, when it talks about oils, representing the Holy Spirit and dwelling. All right. Five were indwelt with the Holy Spirit, five were not. Uh, a lot of people said that's, I don't see that. Well, I see this. Five had something that five didn't. All right. The wise had what the, the foolish did not. So when the time came for the pre-tribulation rapture, five were accepted. The five that didn't have something missing, when they came back, they they must have had it or found it or figured it out or something, but they weren't accepted in. It was too late. Why? This is where I go against Tim LaHaye. Tim LaHaye and Jenkins with their Left Behind series, movies, and books, have hurt the body of Christ so much. I'd love to meet that man and tell him to his face, you know what you've done, but instead, no, no I shouldn't be that way because he's going to go to God for it, okay? So many people are misled. This is why I'm very, I do these videos and I'm very urgent because our time is short. You need to be working for the kingdom, building the kingdom. Remember, if you're not, you're going to go to hell. 
I know I get a lot of grief. That guy rebuked me in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. How can you say such a thing? Because a true born again person willingly is trying to bring those they love to God. I, absolutely. We don't have time. And it's misleading because you think, well, I'll show them. I'll leave. I hear so many people on YouTube. I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave these left behind pamphlets and things like that. That's pathetic. Well, I'm sowing the seed to help them. No, you're not. You need to be helping them now. How do I know? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 10 through 12 talks about God will send strong delusion. People argue what that strong delusion is. That strong delusion is uh, not realizing they're being deceived after we are gone up. The rapture will be explained away. The pre-tribulation rapture will be explained away. God will allow it to be explained away. And then those people are, don't know they'll miss it. Like Moda's son, I, I talked to him and talked to him. He's like, well, if you get raptured, I'll believe it then. No. God has no limitations. Man does. God sends delusion. You are deluded. I'm not even going to try to speculate. You could have amnesia and never know you had a father. I don't know what it is. I don't, I don't know God. Job chapter 38, excuse me, talks about how uh, uh, we don't know God. Okay. And, you know, who are, who are we when he did the foundations of the earth? There's things that we don't know. I accept that. And I don't try to be scholarly and come up with certain things. Yes, I, I love studying God's word and get in the word. But there's a lot. I, I'm still learning. I'm this in Before this month's over, I turned 59 years old. I am still learning. There's a lot to learn. Not many will go. And I believe that those that, that don't accept uh, the pre-tribulation rapture, or those, and even those that have heard the gospel don't accept it, they're damned. They don't get a second chance. You're like, wait a minute. It talks about Revelation 7, and you talk about how there's millions of people saved during the seven-year tribulation. Absolutely. Twelve million Jews are going to have the spiritual veil curse lifted off, and they're going to have understanding. And there's thousands, not millions, of Gentiles on this earth that's not even heard the... Uh, about this uh, gospel yet that will be taught it but those have you, you better get get them right you got your family your friends you better be talking to them as I gave in the, the video yesterday a warning watchmen on the wall you're to be warning people what are we warning for we're warning for a pre-tribulation rapture I got news for Joel Richardson and all these other people on this list and, and uh a rude awakening and all these other people, you know, those that listen to Murray, he's passed on, but he's he has a lot of following and stuff. These people, they just don't get it. Uh, God, family, God, family, and guns. The one that said uh, it's satanic, what I'm saying, he's going to answer to God for that. They are misleading people, and Satan's helping them all the way. Paul's mystery. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 58. Behold, I show you a mystery. You shall not sleep, but we shall all be changed. In the moment and twinkling of an eye, the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Excuse me. For this incorruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall be put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is walled up in thy victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is law. But thanks to be God, for which giveth us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Keep working for the kingdom. We are to do that while we draw breath. Now, people get this so mixed up. The last trumpet. And then they're thinking, well, that's the last trumpet in, in Revelation when, when the signs and stuff. The last trumpet. It means the last trumpet in the series, people. If you watch things with the wedding, uh, God, family, and guns talks against us about the last trumpet. And that's the reason why I'm using this verse here because he was talking about how, you know, we don't get it. That's the last trumpet at the end of the seven year tribulation. No, not at all. This is a pre-tribulation rapture is what all Paul taught. Um, there's going to be a trumpet announcing. Remember in the, uh, uh, they announced in Matthew 25, 1 through 13, 
they announced the broom coming. That's how they do that. The trumpets. There's going to be trumpet sounds going to announce the groom coming, which is Jesus Christ. They're going to announce him in the clouds. The world's going to hear it. They won't know. They'll just hear a bunch of trumpet sounds. Then the, then there'll be a trumpet sound for the dead in Christ to come up. And that, that'd be the last trump, or there'll be one more trump signaling us to come up. Because I know when the dead in Christ come up, we are changed like that. Twinkling of an eye. They'll go up, and they will follow up. So there's a couple of trumpets there. I mean, even if there's not a trumpet, command trumpet, which I believe there is, but I say there's not a command trumpet. You just hear the trumpet of the announcement. Well, that's the last trump. I mean, it's, they, they take stuff and, and make something out of nothing. And then when you try to say something about it, they're like, well, you're twisting scriptures and things like that. Trumpets are used throughout. I did a video about trumpets, uh, the commands and announcements and different things. Uh, wedding feasts, trumpets are used. Uh, I, I watched a video a while back where they I tried, they did original wedding feast in Israel, and they were using trumpets and stuff. So that's part of it. That's that's nothing. Uh, but I just showed scripture on everything where I get stuff. Uh, like I said, I talked about the Dead Sea Scrolls, 200 AD, the Essenes. You want documentation. Uh, that it's not a, a early teaching. Uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls talk about how uh, uh, the pre-tribulation rapture was taught by the early church. The Book of Enoch talks about it. There's all kinds of things that talk about pre-tribulation rapture. It's not an 1800 Darby thing. That's a lie. There's always been talk about it. And that's the reason why uh, Paul wrote his letters in Thessalonians, because they were concerned. There was talk and people were saying, you're going to miss it or they missed it. And he says, and that's, you know, there's a lot of confusion. There's always been confusion in the church. That's where Satan is. He's in the churches, confusing the body of Christ and trying to confuse the body of Christ and trying to keep people from being part of the body of Christ. That's his goal. He's like a roaring lion. And so attacking people, and that's what it's all about. That's why I do these videos. I'm going to keep doing these videos till we go up. And I look forward to meet someone someday that's looked at one of my videos. I really do. But, uh, uh, people comment and say what they want. But there's not that many, not many at all, that uh, go up. And that's the sad part about it. Like I said, there's over a million subscribers on this list. I took about five minutes. Oh, it took me five minutes to go there, Mark, you know, through the pre-tribulation rapture doctrine deception and look at all the, you know, and do it like that. But uh, over a million people that are lost right there. Can you be? Can you back up sincerely? What I, you know, John, do you really back up? Yes, I back it up sincerely. I believe if you do not believe in the pre-tribulation rapture doctrine, because if you're born again, God will guide you in correct teachings. That's just why I say if someone's going to a church, uh, whatever's being taught that that's not correct or something, they'll walk out of that church because that Holy Spirit will keep get out of here, get out of here. He'll show you through scriptures. They'll be like, you're not here, you don't belong here. That's just my use. I come from Catholic uh, town. I have so many Catholic friends. Well, people I know, I have many I've not seen for years. But uh, you cannot be a part of the Catholic Church and be saved. Catholic Church is not Christian. All right, it's paganistic, and uh, it's it's cult like. Now, can someone be there and be born again? Yeah, and if they step out of the Catholic Church, if they're truly born again, if not, they're going to stay there. But it'd be hard because they're taught works by faith and different things. I have faith and do works. There's a difference. I don't work for my salvation. You cannot. Uh, the repentive man and different things like that uh, taught by the Catholic Church. Purgatory. Uh, don't get me started. Uh, they pray to Mary. That's Diana worship. Ishtar. Go back and do your studies. I mean, that's where all that comes from. So, And that's what this is all about. I, I present things. Instead of bickering and fighting, uh, you're going to have that in people. But uh, the fact is, it's uh, I'm putting this out in this moment in time because it's about over, and I'm being obedient to God. And I've listened to some of these videos. I've had I've had these guys. Joel Richardson was talking about how he was being obedient to God. He's standing against the crowd, you know. But unfortunately, he's standing the wrong way, and he's on my prayer list, and I pray for him. But uh, there's just so many. It's just unreal. There's so many. God bless you, and I hope that you uh, 
take us to take us not just to heart, but in with the mind. It takes both, right? Don't be led by emotion ever. Be led by emotion. That will lead you astray. And get in God's word and study. And this is what I, I'm, I'm trying to do: motivate you and give you some things that maybe you've not been shown. And get in God's word. Thank you.